wish you could go back in time? Not necessarily to change something like big, like in Back to the Future, but more like you remember feeling something really, really good, and you wish you could go back to that moment and feel it again. Most of us will feel like that when we get a letter of our scholarship telling us how much money we're going to be able to put towards college. Or when we score that TV show, or that new job. Those moments, sometimes we go back to those letters or go back to listen to those voicemails with the intention to feel that feeling. And sometimes we can for like a glimpse, but not always. However, we don't really want to do that with moments that made us feel really, really bad. If you're like me, during the 2016 election, the day right after the election, I felt horrible. Now, obviously, that tells says a lot about me politically, but just being transparent. And I'm saying this because during this year's election, a lot of people with opposing views to me felt the same way I felt in 2016. This has to do with today's episode. Today's episode is on the controversial political two-parter film, The Comey Rule, written and directed by Billy Ray and starring Jeff Daniels, Brendan Gleeson, and many other amazing actors. Now, let me tell you a little gossip about this film. I hope you're all sitting down and have your teas ready to sit because the release and marketing of this movie is too spilled to be cleaned up. First off, no one knew about this movie until a week or less after it premiered on television. Jeff Daniels began shooting this film as soon as he finished his run in To Kill a Mockingbird. So around May or June of 2019. He said he agreed to make this film if the movie was released before the 2020 election. Then... The head honchos of Viacom decided not to release it before the 2020 election because they thought it would swing votes. Jeff Daniels then said, well, if that's, that's going to be the case, he would not promote the movie. He was just going to be out. Then before you know it, the big wigs say they're going to release it on September 29th and 30th. And within a week... Jeff Daniels goes on a late show with Stephen Colbert, Rombo with Michael Moore, and talks about all of this that I'm telling you right now. That's the first time I heard about this film, as well as the rest of the world. Now, okay, let's spill some tea further. (laughs) This movie has been available on streaming for a relatively short time, and it already has tons of ratings. But when I looked into Rotten Tomatoes, it did not have as much information about its ratings as Capone or Birds of Prey. The tomato meter is 67% out of all critics. Top critics is 75%. And the average audience score is 76%. That's all the information I found in Rotten Tomatoes. INDB gave it a 7.1 out of 10 from 3,000 419 ratings. These numbers may have gone up since I last looked at them, and especially since you've listened to this episode. I hope you find folk, watch it, and go on these websites and coin in your own opinions. After all, the people's voice is the voice we should be listening to. Now, let me tell you what I think about the whole thing. Both part one and part two will keep you on the edge of your seat. Part one ends with a bookmark ending, which means just that part two begins exactly where part one ends, rather than five months later or with a flashback for context and you know so on. Part two begins the exact same way many people, me included, felt like and spoke like after we saw the results of the 2016 election. Truly. Watching this movie felt like going back in time and relieving an abusive relationship. I'm being just completely transparent with you. The casting of the film is, in my opinion, what made this movie as successful as it is. Okay, so let's talk about the acting craft of these two movies. 
the acting will knock you out of your seat. The actor playing Barack Obama, for example, his name is Kingsley ben -Adir, and he did a phenomenal job when replicating Obama's voice and mannerisms. It was like watching Barack with slightly different facial features. Jeff Daniels, though he, in my opinion, looks nothing like James Comey, did a wonderful job making Comey human and sympathetic. We all have our personal opinions about the real James Comey. However, regardless what these may be, Jeff Daniels does his job as a storyteller to make us want to follow his journey. In part two, we are introduced to the very first time President Trump is portrayed by an actor in a legitimate way rather than parody. Brendan Gleeson, in my opinion, deserves every award available for his work portraying our recently outvoted president. He did not fail into the trap of mocking him by heightening his mannerisms. I literally thought I was watching Trump. Now, whatever your personal opinion about Trump may be, we all must agree that a lot of history altering things have happened in the past four years. So we are bound to see many movies, series, plays, and books about these past four to five years. Aaron Sorkin said in NPR, and, and I'm paraphrasing here, that excluding this film, you know, the Comey rules, uh, he doesn't think we'll see Trump as a character portrayed by an actor. The stories may have him as an unseen character, but he as a writer does not think people find interesting a character without a conscious. So let's see if he's right. From now on, let's see if um, every time we see a movie about something that happened during these past four years, if we're going to have an actor portraying Trump or if he or if uh, Trump is just going to be an off, off screen character. Now, let's talk about the storytelling of these two movies, you know, whether these two movies are page turners or not. Both part one and part two are told in circular structure. Part one more than part two, but both movies go back and forth between present and past. When you watch it, be patient. They're not slow movies. The story actually moves pretty fast paced, but there will be moments in which you may feel confused about what character is who. Unless you're smarter than me, of course, then you may not have any trouble figuring out who is who. Nevertheless, it all gets explained in due time. For these reasons, I give this movie five popcorn pieces out of five. Now, availability. The movie premiered on September 29th and remains available on Showtime's streaming app. Now, if you really want to see it but don't want to pay for the app, just do the free trial. I actually did that, and that's how actually I saw the movie for the first time. Later, I ended up doing what I'm about to tell you. Uh, if you have Apple TV or, or, or the Apple TV app, I think you can do it through the app. I'm not really sure. You can sign up for a special sale where you get CBS All Access and Showtimes as channels uh, for the price of one, which is like $9.99 a month. Now, stay tuned for the Nightcap follow-up episode where I will be discussing this movie with a select panel. Go ahead and subscribe to this podcast if you want to hear more reviews on films and share with people you love. If you're watching this on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe to this channel and hit the little bell to get notified when new episodes air. If you want to make suggestions for this podcast, whether it be for content or development, go ahead and leave me a voicemail on the link below or send me a, a, an email to tonfilms at gmail.com that's t as in thomas e as in elephant a as in airplane o n f i l m s at gmail.com this has been t on films with emmy green i am emmy green and thank you so much for listening peace